Thank you for dinner. Uh, of course. Uh, hey, are you, uh, your neck looks, uh... Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Um, they're welts. You know how I ordered the fried rice without shrimp? I saw well, you picking that out, man. Why didn't you just send it back? Oh, no, I, I didn't want to be rude. Uh, and we're just so busy. It's not a bad reaction. It'll go away. And I'm not an anaphylaxis person or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit uncomfortable and embarrassing. Uh, well, I still think you look beautiful. Oh, well, you're a real gentleman, truly. You know the whole choose a man or bear thing? You make a girl want to choose the man. Oh. <laughs> You're just saying that because I paid for everything. <laughs> man or bear thing? Is that some gay thing or a furry? <laughs> uh, no, not that kind of bear. No, it, it was some scientist or animal activist. I don't know. Um, she came up with this experiment where she asked a ton of women if they were to be alone in the woods, would they rather be alone with a man or a bear? Almost all of them said they would rather come across a bear. <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. No, they didn't. A bear? <laughs> you want to come across a bear rather than some likely harmless dude in the woods? <laughs> well, I, I didn't say that I did. I think the point is that most women don't know that men aren't necessarily harmless. Well, you know, I'm harmless, right? <laughs> um, Hey, do you mind if I, uh, oh. before we, uh... Um, it was really sweet of you to get a motel room. Oh, sure. I didn't want to drive home after drinking, and I thought it would be convenient. <laughs> also... Um, is that weed, or...? Yeah, it's just weed. It's a vape pen. You want to try some? Oh, no, I shouldn't. I don't usually smoke weed. Oh, it'll be fun, though. I'll take care of you. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be such a party pooper. Just a tiny bit. I'll take care of you. <laughs> um, okay, I guess. Uh, sorry, I do love motels, and this will be fun. Oh, me too. I usually uh, end up watching forensic files like nonstop. It seems like that's always on. Uh, I always watch Animal Planet. <laughs> that is a good one too. Uh, you know, I, I would have just had you over, but I have this weird thing about sleeping. Sleeping with a person on the first, uh, well, I guess technically this is the second date. I, I know, it's weird. I'm like, sex? Okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think it would be wrong not to. Honestly, I would feel like a disappointment or something. Well, well uh, I get it. I, uh, I'm kind of weird about that, too. Sleeping, sleeping is way more intimate than sex. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you just... Uh, I've never seen anybody take that much of a vape pen before. I've never used a vape pen before. <laughs> that means I'm going to be like super high. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That, that was a bad idea. Um, yeah, um, actually, I have a confession to make. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> terrifying? Uh, sorry. Interesting. Not terrifying. <laughs> You remember last time I was telling you about my uh, interests? Um, you mean the kinky stuff? <laughs> <laughs> the buckets of slime, double dare stuff, ice in your face during sexy time and all that? Well, yeah, but I mean, there's more to it than, uh, I mean, there's a name. It's a messy, never mind. Uh, anyway, I was just wondering if you'd be interested in trying that. Um, I told you, maybe, someday. I'm open-minded. I don't judge. When you first told me that, isn't that what I said? Oh, sure. So would you be interested in trying that tonight? <laughs> <laughs> tonight? You want to dump buckets of slime on my head and pipe me in the face tonight? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, not if you don't. Oh, so. man. I should not have smoked a week tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is... Um, no. I don't want to try that tonight. I'm sorry. It's just, uh, I'm not prepared. Yeah, this is really embarrassing. Oh, see, I'm disappointing you. No, no, I, I didn't mean, uh, sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. It's just, I mean, it's so unexpected. Oh, oh sure, sure. And, and I, I didn't mean, uh, okay, I don't want to freak you out. Oh, please don't freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you won't. I'm sorry. Okay. It's just that I might have set some stuff up in there just in case you said yes, but I am like totally cool not doing anything. I just wanted to warn you so that when we do go in there and you see some stuff out, you don't get freaked out. 
some stuff. Um, I'll just record yeah. the stuff. Out. Just a couple of things. <laughs> a couple of things. Got it. Well, actually, it's um. More... Well, I just wanted to warn you. <laughs> well, consider me warned. <laughs> So this is what I was, um, uh, oh my god, <laughs> I know, I know, I need to work on my ability to read the room, and that time I definitely did not read the room correctly, and that's a lesson learned from you. <laughs> I mean, you said some stuff. I mean, this is pretty Patrick Bateman-esque. Uh, you could kill me in this room. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this stuff, cause, uh, uh, I feel like I would feel weird with it, you know? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, why don't you just uh, have a seat, uh, watch TV or whatever, and I will get rid of the slime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, boy, I was really sad about the choosing the bear thing. I mean, it's a sad commentary on our times that women feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it has to do that men don't always know that what they're saying is coming out scary or threatening. Yeah, well, it's like there's a few individual guys who are ruining the reputation of our entire gender. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one time I caught a guy taking pictures of me under the table. And this one other guy picked me up with a bunch of knives on his dashboard and mace. I mean, he had no idea. I was terrified. Oh, well, that's different. Those are weapons. If you run into a guy in the woods and he's got a weapon, that is different. Well, think about it, though. You may not have to combat a man if he has no malintent, <laughs> but you may not have to combat a bear either. I um, mean, bears don't go around hunting down women unless they're like starving or something. Well, that experiment doesn't speak to whether or not guys are actually scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it just highlights the fact that, that women have had more scary encounters with men than with bears, I guess. I mean, we've been beat over our head with the idea that men are scary individuals since birth. Well, that's exactly it, and it's not fair. Whoa. You know, and also it ignores all the different uh, variations, like, what if the man is a police officer or the bear has rabies? <laughs> <laughs> or the guy is George Clooney barbecuing in the woods. <laughs> a blind man with a cane. A uh, firefighter on his way back from his hot firefighter calendar shoot? <laughs> that's what you then. Uh, I don't think the experiment covered that. Well, um, you know, I guess it's a good thing we didn't go through with the whole slime business. Yeah, I mixed it, like I said, on the box. Uh, does that mean they would have turned me green? It does look like that, doesn't it? There's another <laughs> lesson learned, huh? Come on. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm trying really hard not to freak out here, but. My mind is starting to go all crazy I'm with sorry, all this stuff. I'm sorry, it's just taking me a little bit longer to, uh, you know, clean up in my thoughts. No, no, it's not that. I just leave it. It's just, you know, I just don't want to think about it anymore. I'm saying no. I feel like you're hearing me, and I, I just don't want to think about it anymore. Okay, let's just, uh, you're talking really fast. <laughs> Here. Let's just watch some TV and get on, get on with our night. Okay. <laughs> In 1998, a human skull retrieved from an Ohio pond reveals a ghastly crime. Markings on the skull indicate that the victim's head was crushing. Um, here, let's do this. Um, animal Planet is more of my safe space. Incredibly, she has managed to cast the seal. Blood clouding the icy mountain. <laughs> <laughs> but this blood soap cycle can't go on forever. Each hunt drains the polar bear of her reserves, pushing her closer to the edge of survival. Wow, there's a lot of blood.
You would look so good all messy. So pretty. Here, we'll just be a little What the f- oh, 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 you hurt me! You hurt me! I, I'm sorry, I'm just being really That's like a salt or something. I'm so sorry, I've never hit anyone before. I'm so sorry! I just thought you wanted dessert. <laughs> Wait! This is bullshit! What the fuck were you doing with that? I, I thought I told you I wasn't into that. I think you broke my nose. What? I, I slapped you with an open hand. I don't think I broke your that nose. That doesn't make it okay. It's not okay to hurt people. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay to, to force people to do things against their will. It's okay to give a girl drugs and then freak her the fuck out and make her do weird shit with, with desserts. <laughs> it's a cupcake. You're acting like it's something scary. It's a cupcake. It's a harmless little cupcake. Don't you dare! <laughs> I'm not. Look, I'm sorry I hit you. You act like I'm scary. I said I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I hit you. Oh my gosh, I am a scary person. You're the scary one. But you scared me first. Oh. All right, all right. I am going to call you an Uber. Let's just calm down. We'll talk about this in the morning and everything will be all right. I should have sent back that shirt. You know that slime, it does have some anti-inflammatory qualities. Your order's here. The female polar bear, like all animals, acts on instinct, driven by survival or fear. This behavior is rooted in the primal need to endure and evade danger, unlike humans, who often engage in violence without purpose. Nature's creatures act with instinctual wisdom, ensuring their survival in the wild. <laughs> It. God damn it, where is it? How would I know? Last time I took this stuff, it almost resulted in a global financial crisis, or so I'm told. Come on, help me look. This is not only the podcast that could break this whole case wide open, but get me thousands more followers. Your stuff. You always talk about someone, they, them. You know, you're starting to sound a little paranoid, like you've been smoking weed. <sighs> Quit goofing off and help me. God damn it. Guess it doesn't right. matter who's dating who. I'm sorry. Look, all the babies grew up. That's proof that this experiment took place, right? Remember back in the early aughts, the whole project was being denied. Denied like UFOs, <laughs> denied like a potential pandemic. Denied like 9-11, capital D-E-9, and now? And now what? Wait, you never told me how deep this went. You never listened. <clears throat> I, I listen plenty. I mean, plenty. It's just, okay, how do I know that, that they, oh my god, I'm saying it now. How do I know that they aren't after us? You know, you and me and us. So like, if they come to find us, you'll tell them I don't know anything, right? Because like, I don't know anything. First, why do you think we are here? It's clear you don't remember, so I'll remind you. 
We are here in this rundown roadside motel because it's off the grid, so to speak. Ew, Frank, I thought this was retro. These are probably the original comforters. <laughs> and what the hell is this? What is this about? What are you doing? Don't touch that. It's gone. Damn it. What? I'm looking for a camera. Ew, Frank! <laughs> anyway, I'm keeping us safe. I paid cash. It's one of those motels. <laughs> oh, plus I got a private VPN for the laptop so nobody can trace my internet login. Oh, and the laptop? Remember burner phones? Burner laptop. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you, Frank. And just keeping us safe and stuff. We took an Uber here. That's traceable. Bottom line, don't <coughs> worry about it. I got us covered. Why do you think we took under Uber? No record. <laughs> <coughs> 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 All right, there it is. <coughs> um, look, I need to read this out loud before I go live, so if you could just sit there and listen. Please. <coughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode of Project Underwear. July 13th, 2056. I'm Digger Downs, and this is episode one in a series of three. For those of you who have followed this podcast, you know that we've been investigating the Nature Over Nurture project for nearly two decades. For those who are just listening for the first time, welcome and buckle up. The, to catch you up, back in 2001, a secret project funded by our very own government <coughs> took it upon themselves to put an end to the age-old question, is it nature or nurture by now? Many of you are aware N-O-N was established in 2001, but remained under the name Project Mimeo. Whatever the name, the work and research remained the same. The goal was to clone the worst criminals with the worst backgrounds, place them with highly respected married couples who had undergone extensive testing and background checks. The couples must have been married for a minimum of 10 years. Some college, preferably graduated college, have a professional career, or own their own business. Middle to upper income, no criminal record, no other children. Names of adopted parents are in a link listed below. Do not click the link if you do not have access to the Tor network or a dark web account, or do not wish to open one. Do not click the link if you do not want to risk being known or connected to anti-N-O-N. In 2001, N-O-N started with simple cloning. First, to see if cloning was even possible. Second, to see if these simple criminals could be fixed with proper nurturing. Jim Smith, not his real name, was 10 years old when he was found guilty of repeated shoplifting and later of burglary. Jim Smith was born in 1940, did his time, and was a free adult. He had improved his life somewhat and agreed to give his DNA. This was not something he did for free. The clone was produced and placed with a couple that had met all the criteria. By the time clone Jim Smith was 13, he was a straight-A student, an ace pitcher for his Little League team, a Boy Scout young leader, and a member of 4-H. He showed no signs of delinquency. Jim Smith is only an example of the dozens of young criminals that were cloned and homed within the project. Then came 2010. What no one had divulged was that the project didn't wait. They had seen Jim was on the right track and began cloning criminals that were even more deviant. Uh, so this is where I put in a commercial break. What do you think? <laughs> what the Frank, is this like true? What what the what the fuck fuck what? <laughs> what do you mean is this true? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I told you about this. I, do you even listen when I talk? I mean not even just to the podcast, but to me. I mean, god damn it, I've told you about this all the time. <laughs> 
Frank, you start talking all this science stuff and you lose me. You know I can barely make it through a dateline and they find bodies and, and DNA and fingerprints and I don't know, it's usually just semen. Well, yeah, I mean, semen does have DNA in it, but, you know, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of the cloning procedure in my podcast because it's not a science lecture. My podcast is... What's my podcast about, Jess? In fact, what is the name of my podcast, Jess? Honey. Protect. Permit. Private. Promote. Project! Project! Project underwear! Just when I talk, do you hear words? Or is there a mechanical monkey in your head just banging his symbols? Funny. Frank, yes, I hear words, just sometimes not the ones that you're saying. <laughs> you know, you do go on and on, and, 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 and the science stuff, and you lose me, and I don't know, I don't have one of those fancy degrees in anthropology, archaeology, <laughs> astronomy, astrology. Jesus Christ, Jen, this isn't even a real science. Then I might as well say I got a, a degree in massage or crystal gazing. Oh my god, fine, whatever it is. <sighs> Look, uh, I gotta get back to work here. So, would you do me a favor and just sit there and pretend like you're listening? I can do that. You know. I'm. I'm just nervous. I'm a nervous asshole. <laughs> yes? Yes. Please. I've got your back. I've been here for years. But we're going to talk about this later. Okay. <laughs> so, back in 2010, they thought they'd up the stakes and try a harder case to see what happens. Now, there is strong evidence to suggest that even though he was acquitted, everyone knew O.J. did the crime. It was never discovered specifically who did it, but yes, you got there. They cloned O.J. Mm -hmm. Now, this was more difficult because he was 46 years old when, let's say, he broke bad. But in the experiment, they took a hard look at when he changed. Even though he did not allegedly kill her when he was 46, there were so many precursor behaviors that they only had to wait until the clone was 26 years old. What took place in his early years is an entirely different podcast. Again, placed in the right environment, it seemed nurture was winning out. But, to be clear, his upbringing wasn't the issue. They didn't necessarily have to wait for the entire 46 years. Some scientists have no patience. Sorry, question? Jess, you can't do that. I got a flow going here. I'm thirsty. Can it wait? I, I, I'm almost done with episode one in the series. How much almost done? I don't know. Five. Like what? Five fucking donkeys on a head of a pin. Five minutes, Jess. <laughs> Fine. It did appear that things were going well for the O.J. clone, but then, in 2036, there came the babies. All the babies. Manson babies. Dahmer babies. Menendez babies. And, of course, Bundy babies. Oh my god, Frank! How many babies? Where are the babies? Our friends, Frank and Tristan, they adopted babies! Do they have one? Oh well, Jess, you've interrupted enough. I'm going to test the firewall and make sure that I'm we're safe. Uh, go out to the vending machine and get me a Diet Dr. Pepper, would you? Yeah, what else? Oh, some uh, barbecue Fritos if they got them.
architecture, right? We studied architecture. Anyways, I didn't have any cash on me, so I just put it on your credit card. You what? <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll take my chances with a bear. Are <laughs> you sure? How's it going? Hey girl, it's going. Are you looking up there? I'm glad you mentioned it. I have a question for you. What if you in the forest? Uh, forest? Let's just pretend, okay? <sighs> if you walk in the forest, which would you rather run into, a man or a bear? Uh, a bear, really? Yeah, a bear or a man? Well, a man, obviously. I hate bears. They're all <laughs> <laughs> also fat and hairy. Not that I'm fat shaming or anything. They're just not my type. You know what I mean? <laughs> I should have known. What? what? What do you mean? You should have known. OMG! Don't tell me you're into bears. Tyler, honey, I'm not into bears, so come down. <laughs> What are you doing here this time of day? I didn't think the vampires got up before sunset. Mm, no, I know it. I was wearing my glasses bags for days. <laughs> so, why are you here now? I got a date and the only time I can make it is 3.30. You're early. Yeah, I was hoping I could snag a vacant room and check out slightly. Just that one over there? But you don't want that one. You know, the guy left a bunch of pockets filled with a slime shit in <laughs> Yeah, Ramona took one look at the mess and said she was not getting paid enough to clean up that shit. And left. Is it really that bad? I don't know, I didn't go in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you what Ramona said. I'm gonna check it It's not like it stinks or anything. And plastic tarp is perfect for what I have in mind. <laughs> so Ramona didn't mention the tarps. Oh, planning on getting a little messy, are we? Yeah, but not the way that you're thinking. That's all right. That's all right. I don't need to think or know anything about it. But uh, some things it's better left unsaid. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. Best not to get caught up in all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Nothing good has ever come from getting caught up in stuff that ain't my business. Well, it's not like it would hurt you. It's mostly for my preservation. Self-preservation is good. You don't want to complicate things by involving me in fact. I was about to leave out. All right, I'll tell you. No. <laughs> no. You are not going to tell me I'm, I'm you are older and wiser. <laughs> well, that's really. Look at the company I keep. I'm pretty sure I got everything, but you never know. And, like, you happy. know, it's better to be safe than sorry. I'll, I'll tell you, but you have to promise not to tell anyone or try to talk me out of it. No. You don't need to tell me anything. I'm perfectly fine. I'm going to kill him. Yeah. Now you're done. And I'm certain you will agree once you hear my story. I don't want to hear your story. See what you've done now? And now I have to tell the police what I know. You wouldn't do that. No, oh, yes I would. I will. No, you won't. Hmm? We go back too far. I've only known you for four years. Four years working the street of a lifetime. <laughs> okay. Why? Why would you want to kill this guy? She molested me when I was 12 and didn't stop until I turned 14. Oh, Tyler, honey, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry for me. Be happy. I'm finally going to put this guy out of business once and for all. Tyler, sweetie, I know it's extremely painful for you. No, it's not. What? It's not painful for me. I'm not suffering. 
don't like doing this. To protect all those other potential victims, that's why. Uh, a lot of people out there aren't as tough as I am. Then why not just go to the police? Do you know the state's track record? No. Just last week, a guy got three years probation for molesting a three-year-old. Well, I'm going to shut the fuck up now since I obviously know nothing on the subject. Why do you say it doesn't bother you? It obviously bothers you, or you would be planning on killing this guy. Yeah, that part is kind of weird. <laughs> Only that part? No, my life isn't perfect, but it isn't shit either. In some weird twist of fate, that experience brought me to where I am today. Where you today is that all sunshine and lollipops, <laughs> as far as my concern. That, that experience made me stronger. It, it taught me that I was strong enough to stand up to my stepfather when he tried to beat me. It, it taught me to not be afraid of the bullies at school. It, it, it became my superpower. And like they say, if it don't hurt me, it don't affect me. You make it sound like it's a good thing. I don't mean to. It was a bad thing. No one should have to go through that. I, I guess I'm just trying to turn this turd into a diamond or even a rhinestone. Hell, it's some kind of glitter. Anyway, I saw this TikTok that said um, that people like him can't be fixed. And you shouldn't be allowed to do that to anyone else. And? And because I found out uh, he also abused my sister, Dee Dee. Your sister? Wasn't she? Yes, she died last week. I had no idea. She never told me about her abuse, and I sure as hell never told her about mine. It, it was a poem. Poem? It was a poem in her note that made me realize when I got too old for him, he turned to my sister. Tyler, honey, I'm You're not going to talk me out of it! I'm not, I'm not going to try to. I'm just saying, uh, did he recognize you when you set up the date? Oh, she Trust me, I don't look anything like I did when I was 14. When police come and ask me questions, I, I'll tell them that the, I thought you would never go through with it. Won't make a difference? Hmm. No, it won't. But it's the truth. I'm just saying, you want to get away with, with this if police come asking me. Well, I'm not thinking you're going to get away with anything, even if they don't put me in jail. What do you mean? You don't kill someone and get away with anything. That's something you carry with you as long as you live. I'm glad to hear you say it. Why is that? Well, uh, it's just that uh, you're not completely gone mad, and you have some sense of that what you're about to do isn't right. If you say so. <laughs> what wolf? to feel that he would like a piece of meal, he went and knocked on Tyler's door. Was that the poem in your sister's mouth? Yeah, it's by Will Dahl. What does it mean? Uh, it's about Red Riding Hood uh, and the wolf. He used to whisper it when he came into my room at night. That's really sick. Yeah, I guess he got a kick out of scaring me. But the poem has a happy ending. So. So. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm glad you asked. I've given it a lot of thought. I'm sure you have. <laughs> uh, are you going to do it with poison? Oh, that would be my choice. It kind of keeps the crime at the arm's length. Yeah, that's the way I see it. Yeah, uh, what kind of poison? Oh, well, that's the lucky part. It's as if fate was leading me down this path. Uh, do tell. So, uh, uh, last month I went to visit my aunt, uh, uh, Morgan, uh, in a hospital, 
And while I was there, I got her two nurses to talk about how a woman in room 112 almost died because she took two doses of her medication instead of one. So I waited until they did the routes and I saw three of those posted in the bed cards. Tyler, honey, <laughs> those hospitals have camera in the hallways. Oh, not this one. She said, uh, Ah, oh, Chris New and Tanner County, uh, they're like this old motel that's about on drug and They don't have the money for that kind of tech. They put the pills in this here beer. <laughs> How'd you get the poison into closed bottle? Oh, it's a it's a, it's a bitch to get the pot back on, I'll tell you that. Would it lose its fizz? No, I timed it. Uh, as soon as he comes when he's I'll still have some of those. It looks like you thought of everything. <laughs> what happens if he survives? Then, then, mm -hmm. I'll take it as a sign. And what would this sign be? Please do not kill the pedophile. I'll take it as a sign that killing the man is not my destiny. Well, I thought you said that you want to protect all the Potential victims? Yeah, so if, if he doesn't die, then I'll go to the police. It's, it's not the way we would want it, but who am I to question God's wisdom? <clears throat> so if he doesn't die, you think it would be because God didn't want him to die? Yes. Well, no. I mean, I have to believe that if he doesn't die, it's because God had another plan for him. Right? Why are you looking at me like that? Just try to make sense of it all, I guess. Make sense of my upcoming homicide? No, 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 not that. I was just talking about all the respects and authority <coughs> you lay at the foot of God. Most folks who believe in God are convinced that God wants nothing to do with the likes of you. <laughs> uh, well, you see, I just don't believe that. That's just not making stuff up because they want God to hate. And God is not hate. God loves me. I know he does. I know he does, baby cakes. <laughs> Come, step over here. That I can have a look at you. Ah, oh, my sweet little boy just comes bouncing in here like a moonbeam bouncing off the walls. Talking about killing this one. Wanted to. That one. Who do you think you are? Hmm? Supergirl? It's enough for someone to have a pulse. What was it last month? Aliens? Clones that bigger guns are. <laughs> Tyler, honey, you haven't been taking your naps, have you? Oh, no, mama, I kiss my ass, mama. I only. I'm only getting after you because I love you, baby cakes. I guess. You know it's true, say it. I know it's true. What? I know it's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, what happens now? Well, I had to pay the rent, didn't I? Tyler, honey. That was your disability money for. Your Medicaid is what takes care of your medicine. I know that, Miss Marty Pants. I just meant I couldn't use the red money to pay for my meds, and Medicaid said they wouldn't pay for my meds no more. Well, if they said that, then there has got to be a reason. I don't know if it's a good reason, but there's got to be a reason why. In the meantime, here. Thank you. Here, a couple more. <laughs> you take one in the morning and then the other the day after that. Oh, what was that? <laughs> now it's fine time to ask after you swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dipakin, it's what I take. I believe they have you on the Dipakot. It should be the same. Well, if you start feeling weird, you go to the merchants. <laughs> Maybe I should live there. I know. I know you do, sweetie. Now you know that sometimes when you get this way, 
some ideas in your head seem real, and what's real seems fake. Not always. No, 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 not always. But we, we want to be sure about something like this. Once we, once we get your life all set, we can talk about this fellow. And we see what we want to do about it, okay? We'll fix you up and back on the streets in no time, okay? Well, now you hurry on home. Tyler, honey, hold on. Here. Take this. And get yourself something to eat. There's a Biggie Burger two blocks from here. Girl, you know I'm all about those Biggie fries. I know. Thank you, Molly. You're welcome, sweet. Oh, that's out here. Oh, why don't you just leave it here? I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. Thanks, Mama. You're welcome. I'll lie. Are you looking for someone? Uh, no, I, I, I guess I'm just lost. I see. Uh, it's just that my friend asked me to give a message to someone who's supposed to meet here. I thought it was you. What's the message? And who are you looking for? I don't remember his name. I, I'd recognize him if I saw him. But... Tall skinny thing with the dark hair? Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. Um, he said he's running late, but he'll be here soon. Go in there, check in that room, and make yourself comfortable. Don't mind the mess. Those rooms are under remodeling, and it's not available for official checkout. It kind of keeps it off the radar, I guess you would say. I get it. Good thinking. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, what do you got in the bag there? Oh! Hey, can I buy uh, one of these off No, uh, no, no, no. This That's is my last one. Okay, I just thought I'd ask. As soon as Wolf become, to feel that he will have a decent meal. He went and knocked on time. Grandma's door. What made you say that? Uh, it's just that I try to memorize the poem for my granddaughter. She comes here visiting me from time to time. Oh, and here at this book mm -hmm. How old is she? Five. Oh. Well, I hope to meet her. Uh, mm -hmm. Some folks say that I'm really good with kids. <laughs> you know what? Uh, why don't you just go ahead and take this beer? But I thought you said... <coughs> Take it. <laughs> I insist. Thanks. Oh my God, Stacy! Look at the book. Put them in <laughs> Oh my God, she is a geyser waiting to blow. I'm digesting. I can't talk to her right now. What's she doing here? How did she find us? <laughs> my bad. I sent her the itinerary for today when I sent her the invitation. Yeah, but you said she refused to come. Uh, I knew it. She's gonna make trouble. Before she hung up on me, she demanded that we stop the internment and that we were sickos for giving in to dad's perverted daydreams. What? She's crazy. Why did you invite her? I told you not to. Well, I thought it was a good time for us to get together, to, to talk about our childhood, and to cry and understand each other. My spiritual advisor does his beautiful healing and farewell services. You'll see. You don't give up, do you? <laughs> 
were spotted. <laughs> Hand over my mother's ashes. Uh, hello, Stacy. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Uh, we are just enjoying our breakfast here in this fine don't tell motel coffee shop. <laughs> Why don't you sit down? How are you? I said, hand over my mother's ashes. Won't you sit down so we can chit chat we're eating breakfast? Yeah, let's cut to the chase. Hand over my mother's ashes and I'll go and you'll never have to see me again. Stacy, that is not what I want. I want to be your sister. <laughs> We have different mothers. We will never be sisters. We grew up in the same household. I want to, I want to get to know you. Or talk about memories together. Get to know you and, and, and become friends with you. Better than that, I want to be sisters. I, I want to be able to be there for you. And you to be there for me. What do you want, Mitchell? I haven't given it much thought. A brother might be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make one thing clear. Lynn, you and I will never be sisters. Your mother, you, and Mitchell here ruined my life. I mean, how do you think I felt? A year after my mother dies, dad marries your mother? And then, just as I was kind of getting used to her, along the two of you come, twins. Well, it, it, if we ruined your life, how come you have such a, a great job, beautiful house, husband, grandchildren? I'll oh, stick to the point. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined everything. My God. You, you constantly pooped your diapers. You cried to be fed. You spat up over everything. And I had to change and change diapers. And then, of course, when you got older, I was a built-in babysitter. You were a terrible babysitter! <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't do it that often. Uh, um, and you didn't change that many diapers either. And I remember when your friends, you put us under a box and beat on it. That was terrifying! <laughs> that was so funny! No, don't. I wasn't. Our mother showed you love in every kindness she could. Oh, you're right. She showed me love. But she did not love me. Uh, what are you talking about? With you, her twins? Oh my god, she bubbled over with love. You ran her ragged, but everything you did was oil. Burping and farting. <laughs> you made her laugh out loud and you do love pat. I was just the stepchild. You were seven years older. You can't expect her to laugh at your farts. <laughs> she was always very kind to you, even though you were an angry handful. But she didn't love me. My God, I would bring home straight A's, and she would go, oh, that's nice. Mitchell here brings home a B plus in spelling, and she was ecstatic. Oh, I was just a leftover project from her husband's first marriage. Well, well, maybe if you didn't bring straight A's home all the time, she would have been ecstatic if you brought home a good grade. You know what? I love this. You're finally opening up and sharing with us. <coughs> Thank you, Stacy, for sharing with us why you were so mean and hateful. <laughs> you were my sister. I love you, sister. Half sister. So hand over my mother's ashes. We can't do that. You stupid rat! Give me my mother's ashes! Stacy! What? No name calling! You make Lynn cry! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh you guys are pathetic! Are we sticking together? I'm not gonna cry, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna breathe deep. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this. We're not giving you her ashes. We're following Dad's last wishes. I don't care what he wanted. She's my mother. I have a right to her ashes. Why are you so against doing what Dad wanted? Because of perverted. Mixing his ashes with the ashes of his two wives and then, and then <laughs> burying that conglomeration of remains in the wet sand at low tide and then letting the ocean surface and bury them with each passing wave. For all eternity. <laughs> well, you sounded, it sounds like hell. But, uh, it was Dad's last wishes. How could you not think that Dad's beautiful? I mean, Dad's, 
uniting his soul with the, the souls of the two women that he loved, rocking in the sea's embrace, cradle of life's beginnings. God, what could be more symbolic of great love? Great love? It's a menage a trois. You're going to buy a right? And that is not important. She's my mother. I am protecting her reputation. She did not give informed consent to a throuple. <laughs> How do you know? You don't know what they talked about before they, before she may have said that, she may have asked him to, to find a good mother for his daughter. You don't know anything about it. You know why he chose that beach for the cremains? No. He told me in his Alzheimer's haze. He and Alice made love for the first time on that beach. So he chose that beach to propose. It was a special place for them. We went on family vacations there. He never took your family there. No, he didn't. Why did it take you so long to, to, to come and get Alice's remains? I mean, when, when Mom died, he pulled Alice's remains out and put both lives on the mantel place in the identical urns. It wasn't long after that his Alzheimer's became apparent. I mean, we could have divided the cremains with you then. Why did it take you so long to, why have we never visited or answered any letters? <clears throat> I got your letters. And I did. I did. I went to see him. What? Look, I, um, I had hated him since he married June. And, uh, he was, he was this big, strong guy who could, who could take my hatred. But um, to see him all vulnerable and needing help, you know, I couldn't hate him anymore. It was like my whole life's purpose had dissipated. I just couldn't go back. Dad loved you. Why were you so angry at him? I remember he used to set a special half hour a week aside just for you. He didn't do that with us. Remarrying was the ultimate betrayal in my mind. <laughs> and the crowning event was right after the wedding. He took mom's urn off the mantle. But you, you see why he had to do that, right? I mean, mom moved into Alice's house. He couldn't let Alice reign over the household from her place on the mantle. She had to retire to let the new couple grow together. It's, it's not like he threw her out. He kept her in a locked trunk in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> and that's supposed to make me happy. Uh, well, he used to go out in the garage and talk to himself. I believe he was talking to her. Really? You know, Mother always thought that, that, that um, the dad loved Alice more than her. I never, um, yeah. You know, I got to know what you, like, what you were feeling. I, in the dad's final years, he used to call me, he used to call me Stacy. He had forgot my name. It was like I never existed. Oh, that's amazing. Story. Um, <laughs> Mom always thought the dad loved Alice more than him. But but that one time when he when he risked his life to save her from that risk that charging bear in his seventy, uh -huh. she she stopped lying about it. She said that Alice may hold a special place and in, in his heart, and, and that's okay with her. She, you know, even if he didn't love them equally. He still loved her enough to risk his life for her. Yeah, that stupid bear story. I told and retold that nausea. <laughs> you know, he didn't even remember, remember Mom's name either. He only talked about Alice. 
for real. Yeah. Yeah, he, he tells stories about things that, he talked about things that like I had done or Alice had done, but he kept saying that, or, or the mom had done, and he kept saying that Stacy or Alice who had done it. Like you and I had kind of morphed into one person, and, and mom and Alice into one. I just thought that? I was the gardener. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, kind of had a feeling what it was like to be invisible. Uh, I'm sorry, it must have been really hard caring for him when he didn't remember your name. You mean to be called the name of the daughter who never came to visit? <laughs> I got through it by telling myself that it was just the disease. We were just as equally important as his first family. In fact, in Dad's mind, we were all just one family, not knowing where one ended and another began. occurred to me that um, your mother was dealing with her own sense of insecurity. I'm not going to get my mother's ashes, am I? We couldn't even if we wanted to. Dad mixed the two urns together. His two wives became one. We, we could give you a portion of the blended ashes. <laughs> oh God, even in death I can't have my mother to myself. I have to bring my stepmother along. Too bad I can't get the idea that both of them all, of all of them are up in the waves. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to build a, a shrine to her, you know, in my garden so she wouldn't be forgotten. Alice would have been really lonely all by herself. You're right. Both those women and dad did their best to to show me love and to, uh, to love me. I think they did too. Um, do you think as um, part of the internment ceremony, I, I, I could get a, a share of, of the ashes? I'm, I'll, make a, uh, I'll make a shrine to all three uh, in my garden. That would be lovely. But, um, you know what? You know what? I'll, um, I will try this um, sister friendship thing with you. Sister, that would be glorious! I got my I'm going to text you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call a nut. Okay? You follow me. Okay, okay, then, uh, then um, I'm going to email you every day, and when it's important, I'm going to make sure that I text you, and, and we'll come out. And outings together and holidays. I miss you so much at Christmas. I will go out to lunch. I call them up. That's all I can handle. Well, yeah, maybe in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be best friends. When we retire, we'll be best travel buddies. Jake hates traveling. We can go to we can go to Europe and Australia. God, I love to come to Australia. Crowbees oh, are just so cute. Okay, I'm blocking you right now. <laughs> I like to call you. Okay. We're sisters. Oh, God. Soon we'll be besties. You'll <laughs> Oh, because you remarried? Well, no, 
know. If, if it wasn't your fault, I was mauled by that bear. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be for both of those things. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know. Besides, uh, what's her name? Uh, Naomi. I know she was just someone to pass the time. I could tell. Uh, I don't know what I would put exactly that way. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. I'm dead. We can move on now. Unless, uh, you want to wait for her? Uh, Although, I'm, I'm sure she's got lots of people looking for her. Lots of people. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about her. No, I, I don't even know about me. What, one minute, I, I'm in the hospital, and the next thing you know, I'm in this crazy motel. How big is this place anyway? Um, it doesn't matter. You are with me. We can leave now. <laughs> And isn't this is kind of a, a cheap way to run the afterlife? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe it echoes the cheap way we lived our real life. <laughs> well, what do you mean, cheap? We did okay. Oh, sure we did. But traveling around in that RV and maybe, just maybe, every once in a while, staying at some cheap motel like this, and you was feeling generous. Oh, we got to see, to see the world. America. That that part. <laughs> and it killed me. <laughs> but you know, again, not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> is, is this place some kind of a a message? Is there something we're supposed to learn here? Well, just that, that we can move on now. Maybe to somewhere a little more classy. Like Atlantic City. Oh. <laughs> She helped me uh, get you to the hospital, uh, and, uh, and and was there when you passed. Yeah, I seem to remember that somehow. <laughs> and, and then, then she then she left, uh, and, and I sprinkled your ashes at Old, old Faithful, and and yes. then went home. Bring it to her a year later in, in a city. What city? New York City. We, we were as a, as a, as a, at a museum, uh, and, uh, and then there she was. <laughs> um, not playing. Museum. What museum would you be going to? Uh, most sex. The, the sex museum. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and what were you doing there? I worked downtown. I was on my lunch break. Well, and so we got together, and, uh, and eventually I, I moved to the city. <sighs> That doesn't matter. I had a place, had a place on CPW. CPW? Central Park West. <laughs> I am in, was in fine, finance. Uh, I worked there my entire life until I met Frankie, and the money didn't seem so important. So Frankie and I, Frankie, Frankie is my one and only. We traveled the world together. Uh, until Japan. Yeah, that was a mistake. 
I should have never let you try that puffer fish soup. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, uh, so what happened to you? I think I died of heartbreak. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Frankie, you want to go off and live a life of luxury without me, huh? Oh, no, Allie, I, I can do that. Allie, you want to go live with Allie, Frank? <laughs> No, he knows. I couldn't leave without you. <laughs> no, he knows. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> oh, you know, if you're so damn rich, what are you doing in a cheap hotel like this? Looking for you, I guess. Oh, is that how it's going to be? Oh, that's how it's going to be. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 uh, uh, just the guy from downstairs. I told you he was just a guy. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I see there are three guests in this room. Only two guests are allowed. Uh, I'll talk to this guy here. Now I'm afraid one of you is going to have to go. Oh. <laughs> so, Frank, uh, what's it going to be? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I need more time. I, I need I more, more time. Well, I can't wait. Come on, let's go. Bye, Neil. <laughs> I don't ever want to hear that name again. <laughs> hey! Bye! Spectre than anyone. So. <laughs> What's your actual name, Mr. Manager? Oh, gee, nobody ever asked me that. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, Daniel. I'm Naomi. <laughs> so, <laughs> have you been at this job long? <laughs> well, yeah, it seems like forever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need a vacation. It's an important job. Important? It is. It's like Ramona always tells us, a clean room makes a happy guest. Like I care about a happy guest. <laughs> well, I think what I do is important. Starbucks. People don't leave their 
there's semen all over the place. <laughs> there are some really awful people at Starbucks, too. Some people, low life hotels like this, they doubt it. Uh, you'd be surprised. Besides, nothing would make this guest happy. What a bitch she was. You knew her? She came in here every freaking Wednesday afternoon. She acted like she owned the place, learned extra towels, and then a roll of toilet paper, brought her own sheets. Oh, man. You would? Would you? <laughs> Not for a pair of shoes. What'd you kill for? Well. Shit! Look at these earrings. Well, I hope they fit. <laughs> would you really kill for a pair of shoes? No, it's just an expression. It wouldn't kill anything. Really? Well, I mean, like, maybe if I was being attacked by like a bear or something. <laughs> <laughs> You'd kill a bear. Would I have a choice? <laughs> Good point. Sometimes you just uh, have to do what you have to do. So, are you going to keep those earrings? Yeah, I think I will. You know that stealing. I don't think she's going to miss them. I know, but it's still stealing. It's still wrong. I don't think she's going to miss them. Uh, please. There might be some cash in there. You should take it. She doesn't care. I promise. She's dead. That would be stealing. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Well, then I'll take it. I'd never kill somebody for a pair of shoes or a pair of earrings. Whatever. <laughs> you know, she really was not a good person. She wasn't that bad. A new lover every Wednesday and uh, half parade and, and demanding towels on top of that? <laughs> that sounds pretty bad to me. She came in once a week to get her rocks off, you know, what she wasn't getting at home. I mean, it's no big deal. But she was married. She, uh, she made vows and she broke them every single Wednesday. What's wrong? No. Well, I think it's wrong. <laughs> so you've noted. Do you think that people who do things wrong, do wrong things, uh, should be punished? Do I think they should be killed and left all bloody on the bathroom floor? No. But they should be punished. I guess. I don't know. I never really thought about it. <laughs> there is right and there is wrong. And when somebody does something wrong, they should be punished. <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> What does it look like I'm doing? I'm having a drink. Do you want one? You're going to drink on the job. Are you going to tell me? But you're going to pay for that, right? Let's go in her hotel bowl. Trust me, she won't mind. <laughs> so you're not going to pay for the chips either? Oh, no. Oh, the chips. No, sure. No, I'd never take a bag of chips without paying for them. That would be wrong. <laughs> it is wrong. Oh, you and your right and wrong. She's dead. She doesn't mind. She'll never have to pay the bill. What harm am I doing? Right now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Go on. Have a drink. Some, some chips. Some peanuts. Fine. <laughs> you know, I think I will take these shoes. Stealing. <laughs>
Maybe. But it doesn't really matter. Either way, I'm the one with the knife. Why do you have a knife? It comes in handy. There are a lot of horrible people in this world. Why? Just carry a knife around with you. That's insane. Not everywhere. But a lot of bad people find their way to motels. And this one is just another den of iniquity. <laughs> did you? <sighs> yes, I did. <laughs> he was in the bathroom throwing up when I came in to clean. He was calling someone a um, GD effing B. I think he was talking about that fruity woman who hangs out here all the time. Oh, and then he said, Jesus Christ, I'm going to kill that big effing. <laughs> C-U-N-T He actually said Jesus Christ, can you believe it? And? and Thou shalt not take the, the Lord's name Thy God in vain <laughs> That's commandment number two It's pretty high up there if you ask me Stop that other guy too You really are sick No, I told you I'm on a mission I like cops. <laughs> you stop it. You stop that guy. You stop that guy from swearing. And then this, this poor woman here for, for fucking and me for what? What? I told you for stealing. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. It's a commandment. Duh. What about <laughs> Do you even believe in God? That's number one, you know. I'm not going to tell you You have a knife in your hand. Oh, fuck! Oh, where are they? Where the fuck are they? Oh, they could be anywhere. Oh, you need to help me to apply the pressure. Does that help me? I'm getting too weak to stem the flow. No, that's okay. <laughs> See, I punched the numbers in, I just haven't hit set yet. Yeah. Let's do that in about two minutes. <laughs> you see, it takes the average person approximately three to five minutes to bleed out. And the average uh, emergency responders respond in about seven to ten minutes, so if I turn it right... I'll be, we'll be dead. And you're going to need to tell them. Oh, oh, that's easy. Uh, let's see. Uh, you came in, caught the murderer in the act, uh, he stabbed you on the way out, and, uh, and then I came in several minutes later to get towels off the, the cart, and just before you died, you said, he said that he killed the other guy in the other room as well. <laughs> <laughs> How many, Carl, you psychopathic me. Uh, so many bad people. <laughs> I kind of lost count. I think I'll probably take a few weeks off before my next one. <laughs> oh, and then, then I have to take care of that guy that comes here every Sunday with buckets of slime and a new plant. <laughs> Commandment number three. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Rolling around in slime and semen is not what I call keeping it. <laughs> and then, um, and I'll probably move on to another motel. <laughs> you are not a good person. Well, it all depends on your definition of good. Have fun in hell. <laughs> I sure hope they get my name right this time. <laughs> <laughs>